Hello and welcome to the Fishing Guide Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Weekman. Special guest, always a good guest, Greg Robinson's here. He is a Beaver Lake crappie fishing guide and an expert at all kinds of things, even installing electronics in the boat. So we might even touch a little bit on that too. But let's first, uh, Greg, let's start about fishing, this wintertime fishing for crappie. How are you catching fish? Well, most generally in the wintertime, yes, uh, we target the, uh, like docks and, and uh, target uh, brush piles a lot of times. Been, uh, but the uh, last time or two I've been out has uh, been a little bit unexpectedly of being able to catch a few roaming fish even this year. Uh, uh-huh. With our lake, lake level being down lower, I think that might have a little bit of factor to do with it. Right. Then... Uh, I think it's uh I think it's the first time we've been this low and now in probably what seven, eight years. Yeah, it's been and, quite a while. Uh, at least at And least, it's not uh, muddy and logs aren't exactly. floating down Usually so you can actually Yeah, the last three years for sure it's uh we've been getting big rains in November and December uh-huh. and really didn't get to fish much. Uh right. you know, in this time of year because of the debris and the flooding and yep. and that sort of thing. So uh you know, it's 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 going to be uh, kind, of, kind of different. Uh, I know um, a few of the people that have uh, been uh, this year uh, more so than normal. The uh, most generally this time of year, you can get spider rigging out. Right, we used to do a lot, a fair amount of that in uh-huh. uh, in the winter months, and uh, it was very effective with that. But uh, I know that bite's been a little tough this year. Seems like, uh, and uh, some of the other guys I know that. Well, the spider rigging legend, Beaver uh, Lance, right. uh, he's been struggling getting limits uh, here lately than to what right. he would normally do. So I don't know if that's uh, light fluctuating so much. And uh, our temperature's been up and down. I mean. Yeah, one day, uh, like today, right right today, the lake is, it's probably, it's back up a couple yeah. of degrees. And, well, uh, let's see, so. what was it, two weeks ago, we was having 75 degree days. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, the 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 temperature level has just been up and down and up and down. That affects everything. So let's break it down. So uh, you said about fishing docks and maybe some wood, but let's start, uh, let's talk about uh, sniping for them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, basically sight fishing with your electronics. <laughs> with the, uh, and tell us which, uh, which uh, unit that you have on your boat which one okay, are you i'm running at? the uh 34 uh live scope garmin live scope uh lvs, LVS 34, 34 uh-huh. which is the the newer version uh but i have mine connected to uh 126 svs okay um the which, which is, is a it? great unit it's uh you know you're looking at a three thousand dollar unit versus right. you know more money into the 8600s and stuff but uh, as far as a good quality unit, that is probably the most popular uh, unit as out above, you know, everybody buys the 93. Uh, but I think that they're all catching on that the, the, the 93 now is better than what it was when it first came out. Right. Because they made it a UHD as well. Uh-huh. So they've brought the pixels and the resolutions and stuff up, but the, the what you get into with a ninety three version of twelve is the ninety three. If you got to hook the live scope, that's all you're going to use it for. Right. Other than sonar, uh-huh. you can't link it to another graph because it only has one port, network port on the back. So the tens and the twelves are becoming the one hundred sixes and the one twenty sixes are. Popular. Becoming your most two popular units. Yep. So you're using that because you're casting out to the fish that you're Yes, doing. sir. So well, I don't what... do much casting. A lot of okay. people will take and cast to them. Um, to me, I personally like to take, uh, well, now we're using the B&M 16-foot. Uh, Black Widow. Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Uh, awesome rod. But I, uh, I use a bait caster reel on it. Right. And uh, whether I use a 14-foot diamond series, which I've used a lot of, right. um, I I like to take the thumb bar and, uh, and 
I can release that line. So I've already got a rod length to line out. Right. And with me having, I continually keep the line in my hand. That's how I control my line up and down. Right. Uh, you know, and that sort of thing. And maybe being able to lob it a little bit. So um, I like to, bait casters because you get the thumb bar and it's usually when i go to pitch i pull line out right to allow that little extra length on the pitch right. uh with the 14 footer i i can pitch no problem at 20 25 uh, and i don't right. know about the 16 i probably go 30 35 right. easy and so you're easy. setting your garmin at 30 foot i out, run about 35, 35 i run 35 okay. feet out most generally and I, with the 16-footer, I start fishing them at, at, at 18 and 16 feet 18. Yep. instead right. of letting them get a little closer. Now, a lot of guys the, a lot of guys will like the spin cast rods to pitch out on them, but it's the fact that they, they, they go after them at 20 and 30 feet right. out. So they're running 50 and 60 feet right. on their scale. Okay. And then uh, single jig? What do you tell yeah, us about the Yeah, uh, most generally uh, – I I, uh, I use the eight ounce a lot. Eight ounce, uh, eight ounce uh-huh. head, and but I'll put a I'll peg a a sinker above it. Usually somewhere around a, another eight ounce, and sometimes I go a little bit lighter. Like an egg weight uh, or a split shot or egg weight. Well, actually, uh, I like the uh, the little long slender. Uh, some people call them mojo. Uh-huh, yeah, uh huh. Yeah, they weights. just don't yeah. have the little wire to hook to that goes, uh-huh, yeah. goes through the little round pencil. Yeah, uh, weights. I like those. They peg really easy. They stay in place a lot better. Uh-huh. Uh, with the uh, more, some people use uh, split shot, squeeze on right. split shot. Some people use uh, more of an egg sinker type deal. Some people use a worm sinker. Right. Uh, but what I found when you're pitching. If you, if especially if you go lower than a eight ounce, if you go into a sixteenth ounce, you have you you have a tendency of getting a knot, even uh-huh. with the eight ounce. Wind knot. Uh-huh. You'll get at least one knot in between your weight and your jig. And so now you got a weak point in your line, uh-huh. and uh, I don't have the knot problem with the little long uh, narrow. Right. Um, and you're a big believer in braid, right? Uh, no he's not, he's not. <laughs> no. he don't like braid for I, that. I keep trying it and <laughs> trying to make myself uh become uh a believer of it but uh no i'm a mono guy from the word go uh, uh is it high vis i high-vis use high vis yeah i right. use the green uh-huh um i've even used i'll use fluorocarbon before i will <laughs> I'll put the That's floor funny. carbon on before I will braid. <laughs> so uh, if you weren't out there sniping them and you had to do something else in the wintertime, is boat dock snack or is it is it standing yeah, timber? What's I, next to uh, your... I have a tendency to go to the timber a little okay. bit quicker, but then I do the dock because I'm just not the best dock person. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the thing on the docks is, is just the fact that not every dock's going to have fish. You right. know, and then you just got to go and look, and and if all the conditions are just right, then I'm a dock guy. But <laughs> if those conditions aren't there, g- give me a brush pile or give me some right. standing timber, and uh, I, I like that. I like being able to to pull them off the timber and out of the brush. Well, let's talk about how you're going to approach standing timber. Let's say that standing timber is visible, standing timber. We've got of, more standing visible now than we've yeah. had in a while. <laughs> but let's say you're going to attack, um, you're going to approach standing timber you can see. Are you going to approach that different from uh, timber that's still underneath the water? There's still some stumps or things that are underneath the water. Are you going to... Well, I mean, of course, whether it's standing or, or, I mean, sticking out of the water or just under the surface, of course, the light scope, we can see everything. Right. And, uh, but uh, sometimes it, it's really strange because uh, you may have a tree that is sticking out of the water right. and there's nothing on it. But right. then the one that's just barely under the water, there'll be fish on it. And so... Uh, I mean, I don't approach the one tree any different than the other. If I see fish, I, I go after that fish and, 
and I just dropped the jig, got straight down on that. Oh, trigger. you're just dropping the big. Yeah, I just dropped sixteen down. or mm-hmm. fourteen foot right on them, mm-hmm. right down to them. Right down you're to keeping them. the lure just above, mm-hmm. just, just above, above them. them. Uh, same way the bus pile. If I'm fishing okay. bus pile, uh, back back in the day, I casted a lot, and we would right. cast and figure out. About how many? I mean, right. the old saying is a jig falls a foot a second. So right. you sit there and count one, one thousand until you think you got down about fifteen and twelve, and just slow reel it in and bing, catch them. But uh, don't do that much anymore. I just strictly, if I'm brush pile fishing, it is strictly with a, a twelve, fourteen. I will be trying the sixteen, right? But usually to twelve and fourteen. And I get up in that distance of them, and I straight down vertically jig them, right, and uh, peg them off one at a time. So let's talk about your rig that you're going to use to to peg them off with. What are you going to use? Uh, most uh, most generally, I use the uh, on the brush piles. Uh, I'll use the um, the uh, two two and a quarter inch uh, swim R's, Bobby okay. Garland swim R. All right, it's it's just a tad bigger than a baby shad right uh, baby shads work well too uh, i have a tendency to use those more on the brush piles and the pole timber yeah uh on the chasing the roamers it just varies uh sometimes i use the two inch sometimes i use the swim r uh sometimes i go to what to call a slab hunter which is a still a two and a quarter inch bait but it's a bulkier bait right thicker bodied with a, a little twin paddle tail um or i'll even go to a three inch slab slayer right depending on what that fish is wanting um so if you're dropping straight down or do you have a weight above it when you're not on the, the bus pile bus, pile. bus oh, pile no, huh? i do just an eight ounce jig head and that's it sometimes a 16th uh-huh and just just a jig on what, what do happens, you do when the wind's blowing because what happens got, on got, the uh what happens on the uh if you're trying to run a sinker above your jig on the brush pile, yeah. and even in the timber, yeah, a limb will get the, a limb will get your weight, right, and it'll cause you to hang up, and then it's harder to get it unhung without just bearing back and pulling and breaking it. If if you get hung with a single jig, um, I don't, I don't take and do a lot of pulling and tugging. I literally just take and get a hold of the handle of the rod or the reel uh-huh. of rod and just let it fall. Just hold the line just kind of steady, just tension on it. Right. And just let that free fall to the bus pile and then just push on it and you'll hear it. You'll hear the jig click, click right off of the bus pile and you're unhung and right. you don't disturb the fish and you can just back right back out and just start fishing again if you yank on them pulling and everything you can disturb the fish and spook the fish out of your bus pile yeah we saw that last week we did that i got hung up i think i only got hung up once but when oh, yeah. i got hung up the pile was full of crappie <laughs> and when i got hung up i yanked on it yeah to because you know i was trying to get away from them and i was hoping my line would break somewhere and of course the line didn't break and so uh and then we saw all the fish scattered right yeah so all the fish scattered and the guy was looking down there it's actually mitch is looking down there and mitch just pitches out to one and i'll be dog if he didn't catch one yes, yes. And of course i heard about it oh, the yeah. rest of the day but i was like i know what you complain about i go shake See, all the trees yeah. get hung up <laughs> then he can catch one then roman catch that a way. Fish. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way he gets one roman swimming out away from the brush pile. scared <laughs> scared fish was still screaming uh, yeah. probably snagged him well, in that's the, a snagged te- him in the on getting unhung um a real good friend of mine his name is alton pennington he's uh-huh well known on our lake uh he's probably yeah, one of the think. best plus ball fishermen on our lake and uh he and i've spent several hours in the boat together over the last six seven eight years ten right. years and and uh he uh he taught me that technique on getting that unhung yeah. it, it, it's 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 a pretty sweet deal i haven't gone out with alton i hope to uh i hope to i see him at the boat ramp but i hope yeah, to get out with him guy. once just to uh yeah just to visit with them and stuff yeah. but uh that guy's got a uh 
that guy's got a, a, an amazing memory on yeah. brush piles. Brush piles. Wood. I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, he's got them. His waypoints on his graph, and right. it's just unreal how many he has on there. Just like the rest of us, right? But he can just be running down the lake and just. Mm, yeah, I think there's one. We'll see if this one's still here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I don't know, and, and he can peg it. I mean, he can. It's not like get yeah. up there on the tow motor and hunt to find it with live scope. Yeah. He pulls in and he drops live scope and he swoops it about three times. There it is, right there. <laughs> I think. So, I, think I can't he's, quite do that. <laughs> he's been out there fishing more than me, and I've been out there the last sixteen days in a row. This is the first day I haven't gone fishing yeah. in sixteen yeah. days. And, well, he just went today. That's the first time he's went in, uh, I guess, in about a week. Cause he oh, wow. he went to Tennessee to see his grandkids. Oh, so. Right. Well, so uh, that gives us um, gives us some good information as we're going fishing. Mm-hmm. Do you have a tip for them if they're going to go out there in the winter time and go fishing this time of year? Is it well to start with said, small- this time of year? Depending yeah. on your type of fishing, and then depending on what kind of electronics you got. But if you don't have all the electronics and stuff, right? Just get on the on the uh, just the channels and stuff with some uh, standing timber, uh-huh. or uh, if you know what are some brush piles. Uh, I would say right now probably be brush, as long as the brush is probably around ten to fifteen foot of water, you'd right. probably be okay. Okay, I so remember when we went into Piney? I think it was the first time I wrote that article yeah, about you, about like five six, or six years. ago. I want to say it's five or six, yeah, five yeah, or six years ago, and we had the twelve foot B and M poles, <laughs> and I think we double dropped. Yeah, right? I did. did, I, we did not? I used to do a lot of double rigs, but I've gotten away from that. Yeah. Um, well, you shouldn't. You you well, shouldn't. You could probably find some lures you could use. Yeah. Well, the thing is, on the double rig versus what we do yeah. now, even on us, uh, whether we're fishing bus pile or deal, uh, one, uh, you had to be careful with getting hung up on the double rigs. Right. But back then, we put two sixteenth ounce, yep. or we would put a, once in a while we'd put two eighth ounce or maybe one eighth ounce right, and on one sixteenth. Right. And that was to get it down. Uh-huh. But now I I mean, who would have ever thought now of using a quarter ounce jig head on a single pole to get it down and catch your fish? I mean, which yeah. we do now. So yeah. You know, I think that's changed a lot. The live scope right. has changed our perspective on right. how we fish those areas. It's no probably doubt. good because we still catch fish right over there in Piney in those it's, trees. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. <laughs> that takes us over to Tackle Time. Tackle Time sponsored by Pico Lures. Pico Lures has a complete line of hard and soft baits. So if you're looking stuff to, uh, say, spider rig and you need some gold hooks and things like that, they got it, or you need sinkers and different stuff like that they got it they also got lures you can catch crappie on but you can also go out there and catch walleye and bass and stripers everything that swims in beaver lake you can catch them yes, sir. on a pico lure and uh that takes us up to uh if they want to get in touch with you greg go out with you and your guide service and uh yeah you can reach get me on uh facebook or messenger uh, okay. or you can call me or text me at 479-601-1683 and uh, one more thing real quick yep. uh, on wintertime people don't think about is, you know, guys, carry an extra set of clothes with you uh, because uh-huh. you just never know that when you get in the lake as far as falling in or right. or whatever and getting there. And, 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 and to keep from being hypothermia, it's, it's well worth it. Yep. It's well worth it. All right. Well, we appreciate that. Like I always like to end the show, make sure you keep your hook sharp and your lures in the water. water.